National Fire Chemistry, Unit 3, Chemistry and Society. Metals. Metals have several properties, all of which are due to the type of bonding present. In metallic bonding, you have a sea of delocalized electrons in a, a network of positive metal ions. These make various properties like malleability, which is the ability to be shaped, possible, thermal conductivity, conducting heat, possible, density, most metals are high, electrical conductivity, as the free electrons can move, strength, because free electrons can be locked in place, as well as such things like making it shiny and making them sonorous, which means they can get a ringing note from them. Metals can be found native, i.e. unreacted, i.e. still as metals, in the normal world. These metals, such as gold, silver, are found unreacted because they are very unreactive. Most metals, though, are found combined in compounds with other non-metals. If a metal is found in a compound, and there is enough metal present within that compound to make it worthwhile extracting the metal, it is called an ore. There are three basic types of ores, carbonates, oxides and sulphides. Examples are hematite, iron oxide, bauxite, aluminium oxide, galena, lead sulphide, cinnabar, mercury sulphide, and malacite, which is copper to carbonate. To obtain, to obtain a metal from its ore, extract it, there are several methods. First one, obviously, if the metal is unreactive, it is found native, i.e. as the metal. If a metal has slight reactivity, silver, then if it is just heated on its own, the silver oxide will decompose to give you silver and oxygen gas. If a metal is more reactive, iron, nickel, zinc, then the metal needs to be heated with, normally with carbon. This will produce carbon monoxide and the, the carbon monoxide will remove the oxygen from the metal oxide, leaving the metal. Any, ele any element above aluminium in the reactivity series or the electrochemical series, the last page of the data book, requires a process called electrolysis. In electrolysis, the metal oxide is heated until it becomes molten, and an electric current is passed through the molten metal oxide. The metal ions, which are positive, will go to the negative electrode, and the non-metal ions, which will be negative, will go to the positive electrode. The properties of metals can be altered by alloying. An alloy is a mixture of different metals or different met or metals and non-metals to give the properties that are required. Some examples are stainless steel, which is an alloy of iron with small amounts of chromium and nickel added, mild steel, which is an alloy of iron and a very small amount of carbon, white gold, which is a mixture of gold and nickel, solder, a mixture of lead and tin, and brass, a mixture of copper and tin. Metals have several reactions. If you react metal with a water, you will get a metal hydroxide and a small amount of hydrogen gas given off. If you react metal with an acid, you will form a metal salt, depending on the type of acid, chloride, sulphide, nitride, etc., and hydrogen gas. And if you react metal with oxygen, you will form a metal oxide. Corrosion of metals. Most metals will corrode. The most unreactive ones, gold and silver, either take or don't corrode or take a very long time. The more reactive a metal, the more corrosive 
it is, or the more easily it will corrode. One specific type of corrosion is called rusting. Rusting is the corrosion of iron. Iron requires two things to be able to corrode, both water and oxygen. In the experiment carried out in class, test tubes were set up as it can be seen, and when water wasn't present, test tube 1, no corrosion was noted. When oxygen wasn't present in the water, test tube 2, corrosion wasn't present. Only when both oxygen and water were present was corrosion noted, and corrosion could be accelerated by the addition of other ions, in this case sodium chloride, to increase the rate of corrosion. Corrosion is the loss of electrons from the iron surface. This allows the iron to become an iron ion and so that will dissolve into the water. Ferroxyl indicator is often used to indicate when iron ions are present, where it goes blue, or where hydroxyl ions are present, where it goes pink. To prevent corrosion, there are several different methods. The most obvious one is to put something on the surface of the metal to stop oxygen and water getting there. Painting, grease, oil, they are all barrier methods of preventing corrosion. Other methods include galvanising. This is where the iron is coated with a layer of a metal, zinc. The zinc works both as a barrier, preventing oxygen and water get it to the surface but also acts in a sacrificial way by supplying electrons into the iron if there is a scratch so the zinc corrodes in preference to the iron. Other methods of giving a barrier are electroplating and tin plating. Another method as mentioned with galvanising is sacrificial protection. As seen with the, with the galvanising, the zinc, which is more reactive than the iron, will supply electrons into the iron to prevent iron ions being formed. This will prevent the iron ions dissolving into the water. This is often used on difficult to use oil gas oil pipelines at the bottom of the North Sea and the like. This is due, as we will see in the generation of electricity, because higher metals in the electrochemical series, last page of the data book, will donate electrons to lower metals in the electrochemical series. The electrochemical series allows us to look at generating electricity by chemical reactions. This is because, as stated in the corrosion section, metals of more reactivity, higher in the electrochemical series, will always donate electrons to metals lower in the electrochemical series, of less reactivity. This is called a displacement reaction. and will result in a solution of one metal ion the, the re more reactive metal being added to it kicking out the less reactive metal ion. An example is adding magnesium to copper sulphate will result in the formation of magnesium sulphate and metallic copper in, at the bottom of the test tube. This means it is possible to set two pieces of metal in a solution of ions. If you connect them by a wire between the two, you will form a simple battery. 
as long as the two pieces of metal are different. This will allow electrons to flow from the higher magnesium through the wires to the lower copper while allowing the ions present in the electrolyte to complete the circuit. This is a simple battery. Examples of more complex batteries are given above. Carb a zinc carbon cell, a lead acid cell. Other such things are rechargeable batteries in mobile phones, a lithium ion cell, as well as batteries which contain no metals whatsoever. It is possible to set up a two cell battery with what is called a salt bridge between them what about the D salt bridge between to allow electron uh, ions to flow there it is worth remembering electrons flow in the metal wires ions flow in the electrolyte 